What is going on, Charles Botenston here? Today is something that, you know, I would say every single time that I talk to you guys, well, you know, however many actually view this video. But I think one of the biggest things that I've noticed is that, you know, I'm tough on myself, I'm tough on you guys. And the reason being is I feel like a parent. I feel like a parent to you guys. I feel like a parent to myself. I wanna hold myself to the highest standard, whether that's eating correctly, whether that's getting my mindset correct, that's actually making the right habits. That's There's just a lot of things that go through my mind. And by the way, you're not the only one. You're not the only one that questions if you're making the right decision. You're not the only one that questions, I should have done this, I should have done that. Why am I not doing this? Why am I not making either more calls? Or why am I not studying more? Why am I, why am I not eating healthy enough? What, you know, there's just so many, why am I, why am I not reading enough? Why am I not starting that blog? Whatever the case is, there's gonna always be a, why am I not, okay? And I actually wanna take this back to a quote that I heard a couple of years ago, and it really, really stuck with me. And the reason being is that it came from someone that I respected, just not only intellectually, but it was business-wise, it was just, just life-wise. It was someone that I, I wouldn't say I looked up to, but it was definitely someone that I respected pretty much everything they said. So I guess I looked up to them. And they said the they said the quote is that we're all tired and we're all scared. And and I remember hearing it for the first time. I actually just moved the little dial on my, on the YouTube. And I just heard that again. I was like, we're all tired and we're all scared. And it's funny too. So if you really break that down, is it comes down to empathy, okay? That comes down to empathy to yourself, to others. But let's just talk about yourself because if there is no empathy to yourself, if you have no empathy that you don't know everything, you know, if, if, if you read the book, the, the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, essentially what he's saying is that we're not getting 1% better, we're just getting 1% less wrong. And that was such a very, very impactful way to think about it is that we're wrong and then in five, Five years or in five months or in five minutes I'm gonna I'm gonna think hopefully that I'm a little less wrong the problem is if you think either you know it all and I know that's not you guys but you also have the incapacity to actually understand that there there's so much to learn okay so I look at it as there's so much to learn which is more in the positive obviously what's his name I, I forgot the the author's name of but essentially he says it, you, you just get a little bit less wrong and it's interesting because I went to an alumni event last night and one of the guys that or one of the deans walked up to me and to be honest when I was in college I would have been frightened because that 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 dean walked walking up to been up to me would have been like you're in trouble or academically or something like that. So it's interesting, you know, I come out now and I start writing checks and they're really happy to see me and whatnot. And, you know, honestly, I give everything to that school and I actually thought about it. I, I think the reason being is that I was always an underdog going through life. I was always that guy that you just, you're like, this guy's probably not gonna do anything. You know, I was, you know I'm not gonna say I'm the Tom Brady, but essentially he got picked 199th in the sixth round. I think 14 other quarterbacks quarterbacks went before him and obviously 198 other players. So he was definitely the underdog. Going from Michigan, by the way, and I think he actually played, I don't, was it a national championship? He, he definitely played in a bowl game in college. For him to get picked 199th, he literally looked at Bob Kraft, who is the owner of the Patriots, and I'm a Jets fan, by the way, but he looked at the owner of his sports franchise, Bob Kraft, and he said, one day I will start and you will not regret picking me first round, or not regret picking me. And by the way, he had to beat out five other quarterbacks. Okay, when he when he actually got drafted, he had to beat out a lot of people to, to make the team. So underdog wise, that's the mindset that we have. Okay, I, I, I feel, you know, it's interesting. So the reason that I, I really like donating to my college is that I went to a really good high school where everyone was smart, everyone had a 4.0, everyone went to Harvard, Princeton, Yale, all the Ivy Leagues, MIT, BC, BU, you know, just everywhere. And then I went to your college. Where the fuck is your college? Really what it comes down to is that empathy on myself, finally, finally, finally. And the reason being I say finally is because I went 22 years of my life saying, it's me. I'm I'm what's wrong. I'm not succeeding in, in high school. I'm not succeeding in college. I'm getting terrible grades. My SATs are awful. You know, I, I only got into two colleges. I chose one of them because it was less expensive than the other one. And the other one was a commuter school. So it was, I think it was a two-year school. And I don't even think I, I could have even afforded that. So I was like, yeah, I, I guess I'm going to go to this. I, I literally went to the only school that I had the opportunity to go to. So that empathy of yourself, I'm going to dial that back to the dean who asked me the question. 
question and he said, he said, when you're hiring, because this year we're going to be hiring, he said, when you're hiring this year, what do you look for? I said, there's two areas. Number one is that internally, so internally is within the actual organization that I'm looking to build, is that they're coachable. They have to be coachable. Coachable is, it's, it's a coach player mentality or a manager employee kind of relationship it's not i'm coming in here i know everything and the other is that they actually understand that they have to get one percent better on the outside in other words they see something outside outside of the organization in other words whether it's health whether it's in a relationship whether it's finances whether it's social media whatever the case is they want to get one percent better the reason being is that they're scared they're scared on their finances they're scared on maybe their mortgage within their finances or paying for data if they're single or approaching that girl or asking that guy out or asking for business or closing the deal or whatever the case is, they're scared. And this is the story that I have every time I come down out of the gym, which is literally, you can't, it's behind you. I have a big window behind this. And this is facing 41st Street in New York City. And I have 6th Avenue, which is over there. And then I have Broadway. So I'm literally at the junction of Midtown where you have a ton of people coming from the Port Authority and the Port Authority is 42nd Street, which is the bus terminal. And then you have just a ton of people coming in from New Jersey. And then you also have a lot of subways. So you have people that are flowing down 41st Street, just, just, just in masses, just masses, hundreds, maybe thousands of, probably thousands of people that are just coming down 41st Street and all you see are just their heads are down. They have an RBF, resting bitch face. Even as a guy, they're like this, going through life. And it's interesting because I'm coming from the gym. I'm excited. I am enthusiastic. I'm energetic. I should be tired because I just busted my ass. I sweated everywhere. And I'm seeing everyone that is just tired and exhausted and beaten down. And it's interesting because that quote just keeps on ringing in my head and I'm thinking if only they had a little bit more empathy towards themselves. A lot of people see things on social media. They see it on YouTube. They they, they see all the, the shiny things that people bought or the beautiful relationships people are in or the kids that are really successful of their friends or you know maybe the not relationship they're in or that trip that someone just came back from and you're thinking, why is that not me? Why am I not excited? Why don't I have that as my highlight reel on Instagram or on Facebook or on YouTube? Why don't I have the followers or the likes or the money or the girlfriend or the boyfriend or the wife, the husband, the business, whatever the case it is for you? Why don't I have that? And if you if you literally embody this, and I'm gonna go into something a little bit deeper than this, is that we're all doing the best we can. We're all we're, we're all just we're we're just we're just trying as much as we can. There is no book. There is no guide. There is no step by step. And this video essentially, especially to you guys, you know, I, 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 I really feel that people that are in personal development are people that are underdogs in the in the case that maybe they weren't smart enough or maybe they're overweight or they're bullied or picked on or they didn't have the best grades or they they came from not the greatest family and you'll see that all the greatest teachers they you know one of them brian johnson the guy optimize.me is his website and i'm, I'm really flooding all of his in, information into my brain he his father was an alcoholic dr wayne dyer you know, his father was an alcoholic and, and essentially just, you know, parted ways. You just have all these guys, you know, Tony Robbins, another one, just came from a terrible family. And I feel like that underdog mentality allows and gives you the space to actually input all this good information into your mind. And if you continue doing that, I can promise you, if you embody that everyone is going through what you're going through, that they are tired and they are scared and you have that empathy, so you have two areas. You have this empathy towards you, not as a victim, not as an entitlement, and then you also seek knowledge, you seek getting 1% better, you are taking just a little bit, a little bit action, that's it. You're not taking quantum leaps. I read a book a while back, probably about two years ago, and, and I think it's called Quantum Leap. And it was a terrible book. And the reason being is that there are no quantum leaps, okay? When someone says, you know what? I'm going to stop smoking or you know what? I want a divorce or you know what? I'm going to start doing something that I didn't want to do. It was a decision that they made. 
but it probably took years to get to that point. You know, David Goggins, I, I just saw another, just haven't seen this this one. It was, it was I think it was Entre, Entree Leadership or something right around there. I forgot the name of the, the YouTube channel, but it popped up as, as a recommended video, clicked on it. And the guy actually asked that question. He said, it, it came down to a decision. And David Goggins goes, no, 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 it was actually a series of events that just ate away at his head. He would be in a conversation and this fucking voice would just be eating away at his head all day just saying you're not good enough you're never gonna succeed who do you think you are stop doing what you're doing and he just every day just went through his head listen we're all there we're all there we're all there myself included i have insecurities i'm thinking day to day minute by minute i'm, I'm thinking i have an appointment in 45 minutes that's gonna take a long freaking time i'm training for a triathlon i'm 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 afraid of multiple things i'm afraid of getting in the pool for as long as i i need to because it's gonna be cold i also have to work out running sucks when it's 20 degrees like it is out today biking in this is even worse I'm also thinking of injury, I'm thinking of being tired, I'm thinking of how am I gonna do this with my business, I'm thinking of maybe even fail, I'm, I don't even wanna be thinking about that. We all have insecurities, okay? We're, we're, we're all tired and we're all scared. So when you think about it and you're like, I should have more energy, I should have more willpower, that's more on the tired side, and the scared part is, you know, maybe I'm not doing the best, or, you know, have that empathy, and then also get 1% better. So I hope this helped out. This, this obviously wasn't the rah-rah motivational. It was more on that everyone is going through this regardless of that stupid fucking highlight reel that you guys are still viewing as this is this person all the time, okay? As humans, we only see their highlight reel and we think their entire life is a highlight reel. The beautiful family, the money, the cars, the vacationing, everything like that. Listen, they go through the same doubts, the same worries, the same anxieties. And these are the things that I wish people talked about more. You know, uh, you know, maybe a little bit Gary Vaynerchuk starts talking about that entrepreneurism is lonely, it's tough, it's financially closing deals, you're waking up in the middle of the night, you, you know, you, you're, you're, you're sweating uncontrollably because of an anxiety because of a deal or something like that. Tony Robbins is another one. I don't hear him talking about how tough it is. You know, he's sitting out there just, pr I, you know, that's great guy, great seminars, but he doesn't talk about his foibles and his, and his insecurities and everything like that. It's hard for me to relate anymore. In the beginning, I was like, this guy is God. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk is God. Then I started thinking, holy shit, these guys are pumping out content and, and if you weren't smart enough to actually understand that this is not how it always is, you will beat yourself up. Hopefully that gives you a uh, perspective that I finally came to the realization after many, many years. For me, I know that my, not only the content is gonna be getting uh, getting better, is because it gives, it, it allows me to understand that I'm gonna have an off day. I'm not gonna be able to close every deal. I'm not, every girl is not gonna like me, you know, when I approach them. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get yelled at by a client, you know. There's gonna be something tons of things that come up and it's more of the acceptance. You know what, today I'm off. You know, not I'm taking off, but I'm off today. You know, I, I you know, it's just not hitting on all cylinders. Then I have days that I'm flying through. I'm just crushing the deals, crushing the calls, really comfortable in front of the camera. And then there's days that I, I, I'm, I'm thinking, well, what if people in this office start hearing me? What, what do they think about the personal development and self-development? We're all going through it. So just give you guys a heads up. Uh, we opened BPIU, so if you want, there's a link below. And that's, uh, you know, just a, a shameless plug towards a free program that I'm rolling out to real estate agents and people that are actually in sales and things like that. So it's essentially a video. I feel like this is gonna be my uh, legacy long-term legacy if I keep this up for many many years many many decades this will be the video library that people will really refer to for everything obviously I'm gonna have my content my speaking engagements things like that but this is really gonna be geared towards real estate this is I love real estate I love the deals I love you know I'm, I'm about to go to this appointment that is legitimately have taken me almost a year almost a year have an amazing day subscribe to the video leave your comments below and as always you guys are the ones that are essentially moving this forward. So if there are any topics you want me to cover, uh, I think today is, is a very good one because it, it brings up the empathy and the ability to actually say, I'm not always gonna be right, I'm not always gonna have an on day, and, uh, and everyone else is in the same position. So, an amazing day, talk to you guys soon.